So what we're going to do is convince ourselves that the ratios of the sides of a triangle don't change as long as the value of the ratio anyway, as long as the, um, the angles stay the same, as long as they're similar triangles, okay? So let's take this down and just convince ourselves really quickly what it is. And what I need to do is take pictures of this before we take this down. So let's take uh, pictures of this thing. That way we can use it. What do we got? Too bad I mucked up uh, this 45, eh? otherwise it would look really pretty. Well, pretty-ish, considering my handwriting. And this special triangle. And this guy. So let's take this guy down and grid papers that we took down and put it on the side so we can be as accurate as possible okay so let's do a little calculation let's take a look at the uh, similar triangles and uh, convince ourselves that the ratios the trig the trig uh, ratio sine cosine and tangent don't change no matter what the sides how big or small the triangle is as long as the angles stay the same and this is something we did in um, series one when we took a look at similar triangles right so what we're going to do we're going to generate a triangle so let's draw or a couple of triangles anyway so let's take this and do let's do it here so i'm going to go from here I'm gonna go, let's see how far we're going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, let's take it to twenty. Okay. And this is ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. triangle here now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna measure these distances this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so this is ten here right I actually don't care what these angles are okay so that's the distance of ten and for us to prove that the ratios don't change no matter how big or small we go with this thing we don't care what the angles are because if it works for one triangle with the ratios right it's going to work for the other ones so if this is 10 
let's take what was this one fifth 20 i believe one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty so the distance here is twenty right this angle is whatever angle it is angle a this angle is whatever angle it is and that's 90 degrees Right. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a couple of more triangles. Actually, let's just do, yeah, let's create a couple of more one, a couple of other ones. So I'm going to go to here and draw a line here because it's at a crosshairs. Right. And this distance here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And this distance here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this distance here is 14, the next level up. Okay. And this guy goes here to here. I could create another one here if I want. Okay. And this distance is from here to here. Okay. If I create another triangle, let's make it here, I guess. One, two, three, four, sure. Okay. So this is four, and this distance is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this guy becomes eight. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to take a look at this, convince ourselves just using 10 of uh, this angle, because that way we've got exact grids on here. We're not going to go diagonally because it complicates things. I don't have a ruler to measure it. So if it works for 10 theta, it's going to work for cos theta. It's going to work for sine theta, right? It has to be consistent. So 10 of this angle, let's call this angle A. Okay, and this is angle B, right? So 10 of this angle for the big triangle is 10 over 20, right? 10 of A is 10 divided by 20, okay? Well, 10 of this angle also happens to be 7 divided by 14, okay? So is 7 divided by 14. 10 of this angle also happens to be 4 divided by 8. 4 divided by 8. Now, 10 divided by 20 is a half, right? 7 divided by 14 is 1 over 2, same deal. 4 divided by 8 is 1 over 2, same deal, right? 1 over 2. Okay. So 10 of this angle is 1 over 2. The ratio of the opposite side relative to the adjacent side is 1 over 2 for this triangle, this triangle, and this triangle. Because all three of these triangles are similar triangles. They've kept the same angles. One just happens to be a bigger version of the other and a bigger version of the other, right? So when we're studying our special triangles, right? We had our distance for a special triangle for 45, 45, right? We had one, one, root, one, one, the square root of two, right? That doesn't fit on a unit circle because the radius for a unit circle is one, but we don't care because we're not looking at the exact values, right? For the size when we're doing the trig ratios, when we're looking at sine, cosine, and tangent, because sine, cosine, and tangent are ratios of one side versus another side, right? So irrelevant of how small the circle is or how big the circle is, right? The ratios, the sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta of the size of the triangles, of the right angle triangles, or the coordinate systems, 
they don't change the ratios are the same which is should be obvious by this right if this the seven unit one was our circle right unit circle then if we go bigger the ratio doesn't change we could figure out what the distance here is if we do Pythagorean theorem should we do I don't know a lot of work but let's do let's take a picture of this right before we do the Pythagorean theorem So if we want to convince ourselves that this also works for sine, cosine, and tangent, what we could do is just use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the distances are from there to there, from there to there, and from there to there. And uh, you can do that as an exercise if you like. And if you want, we'll do it for, what we have to do is do it for um, two of them to convince ourselves, right? So let's do it for the big triangle and the little triangle. So if we do it for the big triangle, Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. For the big triangle is gonna be 10 squared plus 20 squared is equal to c squared. So 100 plus 400 is equal to c squared. So c is going to be the square root of 500. That's the length of the big triangle right of this guy square root of 500 if we're going to do it for the little guy it's going to be 4 squared plus 8 squared and we're going to take the square root of it right so this guy is going to be 4 squared is 16 8 squared is 64 so 16 plus 64 64 plus 16 0 1 780 so square root of 80 is this distance here and if we're going to look at let's say sine of a for the big triangle is going to be 10 divided by the square root of 500 so sine of a is going to be 10 divided by the square root of 500 and sine of a also happens to be 4 divided by the square root of 80 4 divided by the square root of 80. Let's bring out our calculator and do this calculation, make sure this is the same value, right? Which it should be. It's a solar calculator, old school, so I need a little light to get this thing back on. Right? So let's go 10. Oops. 10 divided by 500 where's my square root symbol there it is square root is equal to 0.447 right so 10 divided by the square root of 500 is 0 0.447 that better be what 4 divided by the square root of 80 is right so 4 divided by 80 second function square root is equal to 4.447 dot dot dot. Right? So same number. The ratio didn't change. Right? So if one of these circles, one of these um, triangles happen to be our unit circle then the other tr um, triangle would have been a bigger circle representing a bigger circle it could have been our special triangle 45 45 90 or 30 60 90 so the ratios the sine and cosine didn't change okay i hope that's clear it's something that uh, uh, some students sometimes ask me and i do go through and explaining them taking them back to grade eight and grade nine and as soon as i draw this they're like wow that's the reason well one of the reasons we studied this and my answer is yes 
but it took, you know, if you studied in grade eight, it took four years, three or four years until you appreciated how powerful this thing is when you start talking about uh, trigonometry, trig ratio, sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, so that's the two special triangles that we have to know. Okay, 45, 45, 90, and the side links are 1, 1, root 2. Okay, from there you can generate your trig ratios. And the other special triangle is 30, 60, 90, and the side links are 1 square root of 3 and 2. And from that, you can generate your trig ratios. And we're going to delve a lot deeper into this in the next video because what we're going to do, we're going to take our unit circle again and we're going to look at all our stops for these special triangles. So what we're going to do is move around the circle and our first stop is going to be 30 degrees. Next stop is going to be 45. Next stop is going to be 60, 90, 120, and so on and so forth. And we're going to generate the table for what the trig ratios are for those angles. Okay. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.